What's up everyone? Today we're gonna go over leak code number 78, subsets. The input is gonna be an array of integers and the output is supposed to be a list of list of integers. And in this one, it's guaranteed to not be duplicates. Uh, this backtracking solution comes from a user named Isaac3 and he has an incredible template of backtracking which helped me understand when I was trying to learn this stuff. Now, I'm going to not only write out the code, but actually show you how the, the output is going to get built. So um, just look at the code first, and then you'll be able to follow along when I'm draw the recursive stack out. So first, we want uh, we need to write the data structure that they want us to re return. Then what we do is we sort the array so that our output comes in a nice increasing order. Then I call it re uh, DFS because that's how usually I, I, I write my uh, recursive functions. So we need to pass in res, we need to pass in nums, we need to pass in a new array list, an empty one, which is gonna be what we use for the empty subset. And then we pass in zero, which is going to be, and we return res. So this is gonna populate res, and we're just gonna return res when it's done. The reason we pass in zero is because we want to start with the first index. And general backtracking works like this. <clears throat> you add an element, you recursively call around the data structure, and then once that function returns, you remove the element that you added. I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. Now let's write our DFS, public void DFS, um, list of list of int, blah, 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 blah. And first what we're gonna do is add the empty set, res.add new array list. We're using the constructor of uh, array list. L is gonna be the empty set that we passed in. Now the first thing we're gonna do is for int i is equal to start. Start is the zero that we passed in, so um, int start is gonna be the index zero that we passed in in the front. Now int i is equal to start, i is less than nums dot length i plus plus. Now we're going to do l dot add. Um, this guy nums of i. Then recursively call this DFS. We're going to pass in res. We're going to pass in nums. We're going to pass in l. And we're going to pass in start plus one, which is going to be zero plus one. Because next one, we're going to get um, two separately. So right now, we have passed in the empty set when L came in. So the solution, the output is gonna have that one so far. And now, like I mentioned, we're going to now write the recursive, the backtracking template pretty much, is we add something recursively called a function and remove it, even for questions like end queen's problem. Uh, this is pretty much the template for it. So. What this is going to do is populate our whole thing and return it. Let's see what it actually looks like. So the first, so the first uh, sack, uh, the null set gets added. Then i is equal to zero. When this guy calls it, when this guy adds it, so l after this point is going to have one in it. When this guy calls his own DFS for the first time, res is going to add one pretty much and then when this guy calls his own he he gets he his start is going to be um he's gonna his l is gonna be look like this and his start is actually gonna be one so when he gets the function he's going to start at i is equal to one and we're gonna add l dot add one more so his his dfs is going to have 
1 comma 2 in it and then his DFS is gonna have 1 comma 2 comma 3 uh, let me write it on this side so Um, L I is equal to zero. L gets added. L is now one. L, L has one. And DFS with this guy. Uh, I is going to be one. L is going to be one comma two. And DFS with this guy. Um, I is going to be two. L is going to be 1, 2, 3, and DFS with this guy. I is 3, and it will enter the for loop. So it's just going to return. And once it returns, we're going to remove the 3 from here. Uh, it's just going to be 1, 2. And this guy is going to come back. And he's adding one, so he's gonna become one gets added and one gets removed here, and then L two gets added and gets called here. Two gets um, I is gonna be one in this case, and then I goes to two, and then two and three get added here. That finishes. L comes back empty. L is going to be 3, and I is going to be 3. It's going to come back empty. But this guy is going to get added last. First, it's going to 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, then 2, 3, 2, and then 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's pretty much how this recursive stack is going to look. If you like the video, please subscribe. I liked it, like it, and let me know how I can improve, and thank you for watching.